All right. Hey, bro. So, um, yeah, this is Monday morning, the 10th of February, I believe. We just got back from Founders Week. Heidi and I were there with Jacob for most of the Founders Week meetings. And we also got to see Matt Hoffman, good buddy from high school. Actually, a better buddy now. You know, life and experience refines you, and, and I enjoyed talking to him. Uh, more than I ever did in high school. Um, so, and now we're back, and I wanted to show you this little project I was doing here. So I got a, um, I got this saw for I think it cost me two dollars and fifty cents uh, at a thrift store. An old saw. And the teeth were kind of janky, so. Uh, um, I watched this Paul Sellers video about how to recut the teeth. So I filed all the teeth off. I've got a smooth saw plate and I'm gonna start doing that. Oh, one other fun thing. I got some toys. Mom gave a little whoa, a little Christmas money when she came to visit here. And I got this. I picked this up at a thrift store in, I don't know what do you call it, an antique store in uh, Michigan City. And uh, it's a Bailey number six C four plane, and uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's worn like it was. It's been used well. Like there's no rust or anything. It's just the patine of lots of hand touching. I got a good amount left in the blade. I, I mean, all of it, as far as I can tell. There's a little chip of wood out of the tote, and a little bit on the knob here, which you can't see. It's just down at the base, but. Nothing that's going to affect the working of it. Most all uh, hand plane handles are too small for my hand. Um, and I just work with my pinky extended here. It goes down inside there and then the rest fits real well. Um, but yeah, so I was excited about that. So now I've got something I can use for joining longer boards. I also picked up a, my first ever Harbor, Harbor Freight Buy. It's just a pack of um, T-Shank blades that go with my Leatherman Surge tool. If you're gonna buy a Leatherman, buy the Wave. The Wave tool is the best one, but uh, the Surge has one advantage, one thing I like better about it, and that's that you can use all of the like Bosch T-Shank blades for um, for jigsaw, what do you call that, no. Uh, saber saw, no. The one that can cut curves. <laughs> Anyways, that with, their, with that power saw, you can use all those blades. So uh, that makes it pretty versatile, uh, and uh, yeah. So I'm using Paul Seller's method to do this, um, to cut these teeth, and I'm gonna, so that means I'm gonna use a hacksaw to start the cut. Um, I got this, he has a system of measuring and then making saw cuts into a board, and then your saw slides in the board as it cuts the teeth to keep it perpendicular, but uh, yeah, that's a lot of work. <laughs> so I went to Blackburn Tools um, website and they have a printout and you can just decide how many teeth per inch or how many points per inch you want, print off the paper, tape it to your saw. So that's what I'm doing and then I've got this little um, saw vise that I made for this saw and so I'll use that to hold it steady and I think I'll, I'm just gonna use a pull this part off of a combination square and have that set up on the wood to, to guide me to keep it perpendicular so my cuts don't wander as I'm making the cuts to start the new teeth in. And then I'll just file new teeth like, uh, like you normally do. Um, I'm going to be using my jaw horse, um, which is awesome. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll just get to it and uh, show you what I'm doing. All right, so th this is the Rockwell Jaw Horse. Uh, I would have gotten the, was it, Triton? The Triton brand, they came out with it first. I give them props for coming up with a great design. 
but uh, Rockwell's producing just as good a quality product and it was cheaper on, on Amazon. So the premise is it's just got a little sliding bar here that, that locks with a little leverage um, and the, your clamping force is you step on it. So you put, you put the uh, lock up and you step on it and it releases. You put the lock down and when you step on it then it applies clamping pressure. So you clamp it there. Even with hand pressure, I mean, they say they say it does like up to a ton of pressure or something like that, which I have I mean whatever. It it, it works. Like so it just grabs it. All the woodworking I've done from carving to milling boards, planing them to dimensions and getting them four square to uh, mallet work, which mallet work's a little tricky because I mean you're you're pounding on it and it, it does want to go somewhere but it has these loops that you stand in so when you put your when you put your weight into that you know if you're doing heavy planing it's good enough I suppose in, in some work situation it has a place here so you can um, bolt it to a floor put an anchor in there but I mean the whole point is that it's portable so for me the fact that you can just stand on it add your own weight and uh, and then throw your weight into your work works fantastic. At this point, I'm going to be sitting on something here and, and work and, uh, and see how that works. I've never really, I haven't done that much before. I've done some carving like that, more detailed carving. But uh, yeah, so Rockwell Jaw Horse is awesome. All right, so here I am at my vise. I think I've got everything I need. The first thing, I got the papers already taped onto my saw plate so it won't slide anywhere as I work. Um, Paul Sellers recommended a depth of one eighth of an inch for your cut, so that's what I'm working on now. Should have brought my glasses. All right, better get my glasses. All right, so there we are. Got some glasses. Got this set to an eighth inch. Hey, girl. You okay. Yeah. Looking for your glasses. Why would they be in here? Uh, you can look in, if you look in my, in my tool bag there, my little travel tool bag. Got a set I keep in there all the time. Alright, so release that out of the vise. Slide this. You're welcome, baby. Don't forget to put them back. And try to set it to an eighth of an inch. Double check with my glasses if I hit an eighth of an inch. I think I think we're good, but it's always my tendency to take someone's advice and then back off a little bit. <laughs> I can always cut deeper, which usually works for me, but also means that I take a long time to get it done because usually people's advice is just right. You can trust it. All right. Make sure that's all the same depth. I think we're good. Drop this in here. Put the jaw horse on lock. You know what? I'm going to add a board. I'm going to add a board so that I've got something to rest my, um, my right angle on. So I'll put these together so that they're flush and draw this back up to clamp put it in lock with my knee and there you go now I got a bit of a surface to rest that on a little Baco six inch hacksaw also a gift from Lulu I love the women in my life that believe in me doing these relatively worthless projects I already, uh, I already put a hammer in this vise. It was these two here. Whoa. Put these, put this guy in the vise, and then use this one to, as an anvil, so that I could tap the set out of this blade. Because you know, they don't really put a set in saw teeth for a hacksaw. Um, they just make the blade slightly wavy, and so I want a nice thin cut here. 
That's what I'm aiming for. All right, I'm gonna take my combination square, pull the bar out, and then hold it right here against the plate to keep it at a right angle. Use that saw over there. I think, yeah, I've, I also flipped the blade around in here because I like sawing on the draw, kind of like a Japanese saw. Get myself comfortable, set that into the line on the paper, slide this up to meet it, and saw it down to an eighth of an inch, easier than it sounds. Paul Sellers also talked about this, that um, the importance of filing a few teeth out so that you can get a smooth start, which I might go do now because that was harder than I thought. word. All right, I'm going to spin this around so I've got more range in my saw. Still keeping it square. Much better. I'm not super pleased with this. It's looking, it's a wider cut than I was hoping to make. I don't know if I'm dancing around in there. Alright, down to my depth. I'm going to peel that paper back a little bit so I can see what I did. Grab a knife. <sighs> Alright, it, it looks good. It looks good. I want to make sure I went down to depth because uh, I, I set my depth just a little shallower than an eighth, so I want to make sure I did the full amount. I think that one of the key things to getting stuff sharp is consistency. You know, if you have saw teeth that aren't consistent, some are going to skip and not cut. All right, so I'm going to keep going on this all the way down the line. I'm not sure how many teeth it is total. We'll see. My wife, he just brought me the mail from Mr. Leach. That's good news. Another thing I got with Lulu's Christmas money. Fun to look at. Onita kitchen knife. I got from Grandma Hess's kitchen stash when she moved into a home. It's been great, man. It keeps a fantastic edge. All right, and good job, Mr. Leach. Well packaged. Way to make use of the free packaging material. So I don't know if you know about Mr. Leach. I forget the name of his thing, but you get on his mailing list. He's a hand tool guy. Not cheap. Not gonna lie, but but good prices, fair prices, and if you're into the hand tool thing like I am. It's a good way to go. There you go. Acorn brand tools. So this is uh, for me to be able to get inside of spaces while I'm carving. I was stuck on the last project I made. A gift for you on its way with mom. And, uh, oops, this one looks like it's coming out of its handle a bit. But, uh, yeah, so to be able to work inside of things. See, now I gotta go watch a YouTube video and figure out how to reset that well. 
little epoxy maybe. I'm a big fan of two-part epoxy. All right, little update. Um, it was taking me forever. <laughs> like 200 strokes for each tooth. I thought that can't be right. Went back to Paul Sellers. I don't know where I got an eighth inch. It's not an eighth inch. It's like one millimeter is what he says. This is, you know, I've been cutting these more like one, two, three, three times as deep as I need to. So let's reset that. Good. Pretty good. So that should take me a third as long now. He, said, he says it doesn't matter terribly if you uh, cut too deep on a, on a tooth, but I just cut too deep on 10, so I might have a unique part on the back of the saw. We'll see. All right, here it is. If I was wearing my glasses, I could tell if those teeth were either, even, but it looks great when I don't have my glasses on. Uh, I put it to the test. It makes a pretty smooth cut. Um, I'm going to do a little dovetailing with it and see if uh, it really holds up. So here's the skinny. Um, I'd say do the whole Paul Sellers method. <laughs> there was enough, enough variation um, in the, use, just using the paper to space my teeth that the, the, the teeth aren't perfectly even. It, it, it works fine, and like I said... Dirty clothes. Dirty clothes, naked baby. Close the door, please. Okay. Uh, so, it works fine, but, you know, I mean, so... Paul Sellers goes to great lengths to make a jig that's going to guide his saw perfectly into every cut. And if you're going to take the time, then you might as well do it right. Um... I learned by experience, and I produced a saw that I'm probably just going to use and not change anything. Um, so as, as I dress the blade with a file again and recut the teeth, or you know, sharpen the teeth, um, things will even out a little bit, but it works. I'm happy with it. So job well done. Watch Paul Sellers' video and do it his way. <laughs>